As a mother, Zainab Sese wanted what was best for her daughter, Maya Hughes. She wanted her to have a connection to her background and her heritage. So, she took her to Sierra Leone, which is where she was born. But an emergency forced her to send her daughter back to the U.S. immediately. Fifteen years later, the loving mom was finally able to track down the kind stranger who accompanied her daughter on her plane ride home. But why did she go through all that trouble? Zainab Sese was born in Sierra Leone but moved to the United States when she was 11 years old, but she always felt a strong connection to the country she left behind all those years ago. Then, one day, she realized she couldn't ignore the urge to return to her homeland any longer. The only problem was, things wouldn't go the way she expected when she brought her daughter on the trip with her. In 2003, Sese decided to return to Sierra Leone, but leaving behind, her life in the United States wasn't easy. She had tons of friends, an amazing career, and most importantly, a family. She was working at Northrop Grumman at the time and considered it the best job she ever had, but she was ready to give it all up, or so she thought. It was a very daring move, to say the least, Sese told VOA. She wanted to go back home for plenty of reasons. Most importantly, she wanted to reunite with her grandmother and she wanted her five-year-old daughter, Maya Hughes, to meet her too. The trip was solely to take her back to learn about my heritage and my background, she explained. At that moment, Sese wasn't sure if they'd ever return back to the United States. But things soon changed in the blink of an eye. Sese and her daughter finally got on a plane and left their old lives behind. They had no plans to return to the U.S., but things didn't go as planned after they arrived at Sierra Leone. For starters, the transition was harder than she had expected, as everything she knew about her home had changed. Sese's daughter was young and she had trouble adjusting to her new surroundings, but Sese was having trouble adjusting too because her country had changed so much since she had left. They eventually started to feel at home, but four months later, something horrible happened. Sierra Leone had just recovered from a civil war, which made the girl's living situation really difficult. Then one night, there was a fire in Sese's daughter, Maya Hughes's room. Fortunately, the little girl was too young to remember much about that terrible moment. The fire was absolutely traumatizing. And then, unfortunately, Hughes had a medical emergency and needed to see a pediatrician immediately. That was the final straw for Sese, who decided she needed to get her daughter out of the country as soon as possible. The only problem was, Sese couldn't take her daughter back to the U.S. on such short notice. Sadly, she needed to let her young daughter fly home all by herself. As you probably know, most airlines don't allow children to travel without an adult. So, at Lungi International Airport, Sese asked complete strangers if they could take her daughter to the U.S. with them. She asked people at the ticket counter, Is anyone traveling to America? Can my daughter accompany you? Everyone just made different excuses as to why they couldn't help. So, Sese desperately turned to the airline ticket taker for help. Sese slipped the airline ticket lady something to get her to tell who was on the flight, who was heading back to America. The agent pointed to Tom Periello, an American who was working as a lawyer in Sierra Leone. But when Sese approached him to ask for an incredibly big favor, things didn't go the way she had hoped. Periello told MSN about how he felt when Sese had first approached him with her crazy request. Of course, my response was, um, no, and may I repeat, heck no. But when she persisted, he told her why he was so adamant about saying yes. Periello explained to Sese that he had just lost his grandmother and wasn't in the right state of mind to accompany Hughes on the plane, but when she told him why her daughter needed to return to America, the man couldn't help but feel like he needed to help her. Periello and Hughes boarded the plane, but the trip wasn't direct. They made a stop in Côte de Lavoire and a second stop in Brussels, Belgium. The little girl cried the entire time, but Periello didn't regret agreeing to help. In fact, he did everything he could to keep her calm. I was just crying and crying and he was trying to calm me down, Hughes told CBS News' Dana Jacobson. He was singing to me on the plane, I remember that. He was singing in Creo. But at the time, she didn't realize how complicated the trip was for Periello. So this was a long and complicated journey that frankly had plenty of drama and complications along the way, Periello told CBS News. It wasn't that I knew one song, it was just basically one verse over and over again for about an hour, and the good deed would end up costing him dearly. When the plane landed in Duels Airport in Virginia, Periello reunited the girl with her grandmother. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to make it to his connecting flight in time and ended up missing his grandmother's funeral. Fortunately, Sese had better luck reuniting with her daughter. 
Sese finally reunited with his daughter in America a month later, but they always wondered about the kind man who had done them the biggest favor of their lives. They wanted to thank Periello, but it would be another 15 years before either of them got the chance. For 15 years, I felt like I've been looking for a ghost, a person that didn't exist, Sese told CBS News. She didn't know the man's name, but in an unbelievable turn of events, she realized that her cousin worked with him, and after hearing the story of what happened, she finally learned Periello was the man that she had been looking for. With the help of her cousin, Sese was able to reach out to him by email, and it turned out that he remembered Sese and her daughter Hughes. He also remembered singing to the little girl in Creo to calm her down. Sese and Hughes arranged a reunion with Periello in New York City, and they had a lot to catch up on. For starters, Periello had gotten into politics. He led the advocacy efforts of the Center for American Progress and was a congressman in Virginia. He was also a special envoy to the Obama administration. But there was something that was still haunting Sese after all of these years. Sese learned that Periello had missed his grandmother's funeral because of the amazing favor he did for her daughter, Hughes. I was so saddened, Sese told VOA, about his sacrifice, but Periello isn't holding a grudge. One of the craziest experiences of my entire life is now a Twitter thread, and I could not be happier to know you are shining bright, Periello wrote to Hughes in a response to her Twitter thread detailing her experiences as a child. I think it's the start of something else. I want to call it closure, but it feels like a new beginning, because I refound him, Hughes told CBS News, but she wasn't the only one who was grateful to him. I can never thank him enough. No matter what I do from this point forward, it will never be enough for what he did for us, Sese told CBS News. As far as Hughes is concerned, Periello did more than save the day. I don't want to cry, but I'm really emotional about it, because I feel like he saved my life, because if I would have stayed, it's... I don't know where I would have been," Hughes told CBS News. She couldn't help but wonder if fate had put her in this kind man's path. I think it was destiny, because it could have been anybody, and anything could have happened and he brought me back here, so I don't think I can say thank you, really," she told CBS News, but Periello would do it all over again if he had the chance. You have lots of reasons to say no to something, and there are moments to say yes, and I'm really glad that I did, in that case, as crazy as it was," Periello told CBS News. He might not have worn a cape or flown under his own power, but to Sese and Hughes, he will always be a superhero.